So how do you actually draw complex shapes and organic forms in perspective? And how do you make sure that the proportions are correct? Drawing complex looking geometry in perspective might be daunting for many people. So let's answer these questions and learn a simple approach by drawing together a great example of architecture with organic shapes. The Haydar Aliyev Center in Baku, Azerbaijan by Zaha Hadid Design. I invite you and I encourage you to draw along with me in this beginner friendly tutorial where I'll walk you through a surprisingly simple step by step drawing process. So grab a pencil or any other tool of your choice and let's get started. We'll roughly follow these seven steps from my book Draw Like an Artist, 100 Buildings and Architectural Forms. If you have the book, it's on the page 77. And if you don't, you can download this page as a free PDF via the link in the description. By the end of this video, you should arrive at this final sketch. So let's start with the step number one. This first step is basically about outlining the main volumes and drawing a few guidelines to help us draw the building in the right proportions. I'm starting with a ground line which the building sits on and the first thing I want to do is to draw a simple rectangle and to make sure that it is roughly in 1 to 1.75 proportion. Throughout this first phase I'll be also sharing with you some explanatory graphics so you can better visually orient yourself in the process. Here I'm using my mechanical pencil to measure the proportion of the square one to one and prolong the horizontal distance to 0 0.75 more. So in the end I have the proportion one to 1.75. Feel free to use a ruler if you like, but your pencil will do just fine as well. By drawing diagonals, I'm locating the center point of the box, which can serve as an anchor and a reference point for other important guidelines. From a little bit lower than a midpoint of the left side, I'm drawing a horizontal line towards the center, and I finish this new rectangle with a vertical line in the middle of the big outlining box. Next, I offset the right hand side of the big box by drawing a vertical line inwards. From the lower center point that has been created, I draw roughly a 45 degree diagonal all the way to meet and intersect with the previous vertical line. The last bit of this step is to create a little square in the bottom right corner of the big box by drawing a horizontal line from the center. Again, coming back to our reference, all these guidelines are here to help us describe the curvy and organic character of the building's volume. And now to the fun part with the curves. Using the established guidelines, I'm starting to draw the main leading curves of the volume. I start on the very left, in the smaller box and using the other guidelines and anchor points I'm drawing the very outline of the main volume. I'm double checking the proportions and making sure that the unit 1 from the right hand side is correct because it creates a new point on our ground line where the front curve will touch the ground and it's kind of a tangent point. Looking at the reference step from the tutorial, I'm not fully satisfied with the left part of this frontal curve, so I'm drawing another one trying to find a better fit. And I'm just marking the wrong one with a little X so I know what to trace later on in the inking stage. And that's it for this step. Now onto the lower volume on the right hand side. You can draw it quite simply by drawing a few S curves. Next, we want to add 
the inner curves to the main volume, which very often will be just interpolation of the main curves. So following my example and the step-by-step -step tutorial from the book, you can start drawing these inner lines around the edges of the glazed surfaces. As you can see, I'm using just one stroke. Sometimes it's discontinued, so I do it in a few takes, but it's one continuous line and the longer the better. On the example of this frontal surface touching the ground, you can see that I'm basically drawing the curves as interpolations between the top and bottom leading curve. The same principle and approach to drawing these curved surfaces will be applied also to other parts of the volume. Now the hardest part is actually behind us and it's time to trace our pencil drawing with ink. I'll be using a thin fine liner with a 0.3 tip and I'll go simply over my pencil drawing. This is a pretty straightforward process, so not much to talk about, I'll speed it up a little bit to save your time and add some music on top. I'll see you when I'm done. Now that my pencil drawing is traced with ink, I want to add more details. Let's start with adding divisions to the glazed surfaces. I start dividing the biggest surface with four horizontal lines and further subdividing it into smaller segments with vertical divisions. I'll repeat a similar process on the lower volume on the right hand side and because it's a little farther away from the viewer, the divisions will seem to be a bit more dense, creating smaller segments. Lastly, I'll repeat the process for the remaining glazed surfaces and add even smaller subdivisions based on the tutorial from the book. Now that we have traced all the pencil line work with ink and even added more details, we can go ahead and erase the underlying pencil drawing. For that I'm using a hard eraser.
So far, I've been using a thin fine liner with 0.3 line weight. Now I want to add more contrast and clarity to the drawing by emphasizing certain edges and curves, especially the main leading curves. I also want to make clear and understandable any areas with overlapping geometry by adding more line weight to the lines and edges that are closer to the viewer. Lastly, I want to add reflections to the glazed surfaces. For that, I outline the reflections based on reference with a pencil. And then I'll use a gray brush marker to darken the outline areas. You could also render the reflections using just a pencil or a fine liner, but the brush marker will add a nice new touch to the drawing. It's fun to use and it's also faster as the brush covers bigger areas. If you haven't yet, don't forget to download the free tutorial page from my book. The link is in the description or in the cards. And if you've been drawing along, share your creation with me on Instagram. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, check out these other drawing videos and tutorials. Happy sketching and I'll see you in the next one.